How's it going, Bat Family? Welcome to a brand new installment in the Batman 2022 discussion series, aka the hype series. The hype train has to keep going, so we need to keep shoveling that coal for the fuel for the fire. <laughs> I'm, I'm joking, but no, really. Once again, I've been proved right. When gathering comments for this next installment, I sometimes go through the l previous installment to see what you guys have posted, on top of obviously having much more backup questions. There, there's a lot of questions, there really is. But yet again, there are things that as I go through it, I think, okay, is it just going to be like another, you know, chill kind of one? But then I'm just invigorated with such hype because some of the ideas that I bounced to you, you then bounced back to me in the previous video. And once again, I've got a lot of fuel for the fire to talk about today. Thanks to you guys as well. I would also like to apologize. That it's been two weeks. I had no idea, but you know, I've just been busy with other videos. Otherwise, I would have done another one. But anyway, guys, go ahead to like this video. If you do go on to enjoy it, I really do appreciate it appreciate that and subscribe for more installments like this. I am going to be keeping this going. I mean, this, this series is going to happen until the movie comes out, I'm pretty sure, because think about the material I'm going to have when that second trailer comes out, Mike. So starting with number one. Now, this is a bit of a heavy one, but I, I couldn't resist. You know, it's just good. The, so this one's from Dave James. So to me, the and, and if you've been watching the series so far, you'll know we've been discussing a bit about the You're Quite the Celebrity uh, comment from Andy Serkis's Alfred. So he says, to me, You're Becoming Quite a Celebrity line comes from Earth 1, where Batman goes after a dirty ex-cop, accidentally crashes into Mayor Penguin's party, and that's when the press dubs him the Batman. Maybe the circumstances circumstances have been altered, but I'd imagine it's similar. Not to mention, Earth 1, Volume 2, is all about the Riddler, who's bombing art galleries and such. Scenes in the trailer look similar. As well as communicating via shortwave radios, if you are justice, please do not lie, sounds like it's over a speaker or, yeah, like a vo voice modulator of some kind. And in Earth 1, Volume 3, they set up the headquarters in an abandoned subway station. Shots from the trailer confirm a similar setup. So much of what we've seen uh, seems to be like concepts amalgamated with others, especially since Earth-1 is early in the hero-villain's careers 100%, and it involves Bruce struggling with the concept of who he really is, Batman or Bruce Wayne, though obviously not as in-depth as, as Ego. So, yeah, you're 100% on the ball there in terms of Obviously, and, and Matt Reeves has reiterated this himself, whether I've, I've got the freaking graphic novels right here, whether that is Long Halloween to, to Earth One volumes or uh, Matt Batman Ego, that, that's quite the specific one he cited because obviously this movie is really diving heavily into that psychology of Bruce Wayne as I've rambled about many times before. But yes, another heavy influence is undoubtedly Batman, if I can even get it, Earth One. So this is volume one, and I even reread it recently, and it's, 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 <laughs> we're going to get to a few more questions with this a little bit later, but Batman Earth One, there are so many things that they are definitely incorporating in this. I mean, you could also say year one, it is, as you just said, an amalgamation of a lot of things. What's just fascinating is just identifying that from these graphic novels. For example, I think, well, we're going to get onto Alfred, and we all know, well, maybe not all of us, but the Alfred in this comic, I really do feel like it's going to resemble the Andy Serkis' Alfred. But as you said, you lined it up quite nicely. So this is volume one. There's a scene, and I wish I could just flip it open, but where Batman, he, he literally does go after that ex-cop who he believes, well, he has the lighter of, of Thomas Wayne, and he was the first cop on the scene of the Wayne's murder. Um, but yeah, he crashes in, it, it goes a bit messed up. And this is what I mean when I articulate and, and talk about newbie Batman. I don't expect to see full on newbie Batman because this is actually quite newbie Batman. Some of the stuff that happens in this. Like he will fire his grapple launcher, he gets jammed, and then he has to try and run and jump from a rooftop to another rooftop, and he actually doesn't make it. That is very year one Batman. However, I do still expect a lot of threads from these graphic novels. And I do recommend you read them, by the way, for extra context for what I'm talking about. But I will try and give you the, the the gist as much as I can. But I do still expect little newbie things such as, yeah, you're becoming quite the celebrity, as I've spoken about in my recent part, I believe. That could be as, as, as a result of the cathedral scene where that is in the daytime. Unless the sun is already going down, I mean, it looks like daytime. The bomb explodes. We know that much from the trailer. 
And as you kind of said, in the party when he crashes through the window <laughs> and he has to get out of there and he gets in Alfred's car and just drives off because luckily Alfred was freaking waiting for him. I mean, that, that would have been bad if Alfred wasn't. That's how he gets a name for himself there. But similar fashion here. The Batman has already, so uh, once again, citing the amalgamation of multiple different comics, been there, kind of done that in this story, but in different kind of semblances. So what I mean by that is that the city already knows about him in the Gotham PD show. I believe in the very premise of what has been uh, detailed about it is that the Bat of Gotham is causing unrest in the GCPD. Like They don't like this vigilante taking the laws into his own hands. So the police are already aware of him in year one. Now this is one year six months in so now the city feels you know a bit about him so i don't think it's gonna be proper proper like oh batman's here like he's around but like that's why i was maybe trinkling the line of what if it actually isn't about batman's antics but it is about bruce wayne going out into the public because sure that comment could easily pertain to the batman getting more popular as i just said maybe a lot of press as the, the bomb blows up and Batman has to escape for the GCPD and the trailer and things like that. There's all kinds of things that could get Batman press. But also, I did love that comment from a few videos back of how if Bruce Wayne hasn't actually revealed himself to the public, because at the minute, he hasn't actually uh, aced that duality of Bruce Wayne, being Bruce Wayne and Batman to himself. Like, right now, there is no duality. It's like... Ever since he's returned back from his training, it is possible he's just been in Batman mode the whole time, not revealing himself to the public, and therefore, that's that's why he could be a bit of a celebrity when there's a lot of press as he gets out of his car going up to those cathedral steps where he runs into Penguin, Falcon, Selina. But long story short, I've been rambling a lot about this. I do agree with your sentiments about Batman Earth 1. It does appear to be one of them, but yet there's a lot of them as you detailed. That is a big inspiration, but on top of Ego, because that's specific specifically dives into the duality of, of course every comic dives into the psychology of Batman at some point ego is the one you want to buy if you don't have it that really dives into it Batman Earth 1 as detailed here by Dave James you can see maybe some of the visual cues and ideas that they could have taken from the movie for example volume 3 or, or 2 no 3 when you said about the subway station that kind of thing but yeah um, that's why I'm going through these at the minute it's always kind of like it's kind of like research, you know? I'm always trying to be on the ball. Not only have like a necessity for videos, but I genuinely freaking love it. Like, I, I want to watch this movie and be like, that is from that. That can't be from anything. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, I, I, I really appreciate your insight there. I 100% agree. And if anyone is reading this and hasn't read the Earth One series, that will give you some ideas. So kind of going more off that a little bit, just, yeah, I guess these questions just stack a little bit sometimes, but in the best kind of way. Logan uh, Hoots says here, in the cathedral scene when Bruce is looking at Peter Sarsgaard's character, of course he was looking at the note attached to him, you know, addressed to the Batman, but it also seemed like he was looking at the person with the same kind of hatred and intensity. So I had a thought. Do you think that he might be the attorney that was hired to defend Joe Chill? and managed to set him free so that Bruce has some resentment for that character. Also, love you, Vidman, to keep the hype alive. Thank you, Logan. This is the kind of comment I was talking about earlier. Like, I didn't consider that. I think there's a brilliant idea, and that, that would just add another layer, that they don't even have to point out too much in the movie, but would be a nice one-liner that they drop earlier on. So if fans remember that by the time we get to the cathedral scene, that would be brilliant. So I'm not saying that is the case, but that would be fantastic. I think... Provisionally, it is on the safe side. Batman, or should I say Bruce, in that cathedral scene. Everyone's running away. He's, sta he's just standing there <laughs> looking angry. Because, yes, it's another bloody situation. He even went to that cathedral scene, possibly coming out as Bruce Wayne in Gotham publicly for the first time in a long time. That's another big thing, That if that's even the case. And then he just sees that he was right. There's a freaking letter addressed to him. Great, I was right. Mayor's funeral was a, was a prime spot for the next Riddler attack. But it probably is too good to be true. I'm not saying it's like the best idea in the world, but I'm just saying, how good would that be? That because Batman values the sanctity of lives in the kind of Thomas Wayne father is a doctor kind of way, or just because he doesn't want to kill, because then, um, you know, the inspiration for that is because he doesn't want to be as bad as the guy freaking killed his parents. Whatever have you, I'm very firm that they will keep the no kill rule, regardless. But if he has to look at the guy as Batman and save the person who got Joe Chill off... That would just add a whole new layer to that scene where he's trying to defuse the bomb. 
I know it, he doesn't do it, and Gil Colson's head gets blown clean off, as we see in the trailers, and as you're seeing on screen right now, I mean, you don't see the head fly off, but yeah, if you have a bomb to your neck, what do you think is going to happen? I don't think Batman would have that communication with him saying, you killed my, you, you helped free the killer of my parents, but I don't know how to articulate it. It's just such a good idea. If they somehow add that nuance in there, a little bit of context, it will, it will just make that interaction and dynamic between Peter Sarsgaard and Robert Pattinson whilst he's trying to save him just fascinating like I, I am forced to save a guy I actually effing hate right now that's brilliant I as a what last last word on it safe side I, I don't think they will do that it probably is just him reacting to another letter and him just getting angry and thinking god damn it now I have to try and fix this but yes they added that onto it my god Matt Reeves, you need to watch these videos because I'm not even saying it for my, my sake, but like the ideas we're all accumulating together. Not all of them, but some of them are good. And I've even seen some of you type that in the comments saying, some of the shite that we're all coming up with here is good, and it is. Morgi39 here, it's not so much a question, but something I just really locked into, and it's yet again another perspective I didn't necessarily think of, but now really appreciate. So, Morgi points out that Tom Felton had only had 31 minutes of screen time. Not in just one movie, but in the entire Harry Potter series. Now, I'm trusting that's correct. <laughs> I think it is. I mean, I've seen the Potter movies a billion times before. So, she says that I think Colin can do a lot in nine minutes too, and if you're wondering about that, I even spoke about this in my last part, but Colin Farrell detailed some of the scenes. He reckons he has around nine minutes of screen time. So, she makes a very good point. Tom Felton's Draco Malfoy is obviously a big character in the Harry Potter series, but if it's indeed true that he only had around half an hour throughout freaking seven, eight films, imagine what nine minutes of The Penguin in a one movie installment uh, can do. So yeah, I, I've already isolated some of the scenes. Obviously, the Batman is overlooking him, and you're probably seeing this on screen. When he's at, it's not a dock, but he's doing some kind of shady stuff. Maybe it's on behalf of Falcone. It doesn't really matter. He's up to something. That ends up in a, a an engagement with the Batman. You see Penguin firing at him. You see Batman has arrived with his Batmobile. That obviously will lead into the point of where Colin Farrell's like driving away. He's like, this guy's crazy. And you see Batman just burst through right behind him. That will be some screen time but then we know he's got the cathedral scene with Falcone he attends that he walks down from the steps all of that good stuff but that's still probably not actually all nine minutes there's probably some extra scenes it'd be really dope if like he has an iceberg lounge space or something like that I'm sure there's going to be a lot more context but I just wanted to highlight this comment because I don't think I can necessarily spe I mean I could always speculate forever about what those other scenes could be but the the main draw away from this comment is that I wanted to uh, and still in you guys, is that Morgie has a point. Nine minutes can be a lot in one movie for the Penguin, especially with that comparison to Tom Felton's Draco Malfoy in the Harry Potter series. So the Outcast 2 says, could Batman and Catwoman be working together to take down Falcone? So Selina is close to him and could be used to gain information to assist Batman in building a case against him. Not to mention that we know that Selina hates Falcone, the scars she gave him as Catwoman via set photos, and could be using Batman man to take him down because he works outside of the corrupt police force so this is kind of a hard one no, no matter what i don't think selena is with falcone for like the reasons it looks like when she's arm in arm with him i think falcone is completely completely um blind to that he's got like a a, a girl on his shoulder so to speak I think it is kind of hard to isolate the, the relationship down to a T. I don't necessarily think that means, oh, he's his daughter or anything. No, I think that, well, as you pointed out, he's got the comic book accurate scratches there. There has been a run-in. And no, I don't think that was Selena just slapping him and that ended up in like a claw scratch. That probably is her and Catwoman trying to do something. And she got away, but he didn't isolate or know that that was Selena Kyle. But I never really, I mean... I, I, you point out here, and I don't think I've considered too much that is could Catwoman be trying to get Bruce's help after they've kind of established some kind of foundation of a relationship after that initial fight scene where they're kind of like feeling each other out there. So like, who are you? We've dodged each other's moves. Like uh, now we're in kind of a stalemate. Like, and then maybe they talk. I can't wait to see that scene, by the way. But like, what happens after they kind of, like, stop fighting? I can't wait for that. But I don't necessarily think that Selena's going to get close to him and, you, you know, get Batman's help to build a... I mean, that is a relevant story. It's just there's a lot of turning cogs and wheels in this movie already. I did and have speculated that I think that Falcone could 
have his downfall begin in this movie, possibly already opening up a downfall for the power vacuum for Penguin to be a villain in the second movie, and maybe even run for mayor. That would be a big ordeal for Bruce to deal with, and, you know, obviously similar to the Earth-1 comic uh, that we spoke about earlier and that I pulled out, because you do have Mayor Oswald Cobblepot there. The only thing is, I don't want him to die or anything. Like, I, I, I'm not a big fan of when characters die, especially in such an early phase of Batman's career. I like him them being locked up, so they can always kind of break out again or something, and they play that romanticized dance back and forth for a long time. I don't mind if that's been happening for a while and then they eventually die, but y you get my idea. That's more of the comic book kind of vibes. All I know is that Selina isn't with Falcone for love reasons or anything like that but now you have put the idea on the table could bruce as batman help selena through selena giving him some information help take down falcone because you do establish a very obvious link there though that maybe some people overlook the fact of the matter is selena is very close to falcone that's very clear for being arm in arm with the man like, he has clearly no idea that she's Catwoman, at least from what we can assume. So, in, as a result of that, think about it. Once Bruce, and as Batman, establishes this kind of relationship with Selina, well, what more of an opportunity would he want to take one of the biggest crime lords down in Gotham mobsters ever? She could help him do that. But the only thing is, is there time for that amongst everything else going on? That's the only thing I'm thinking about. Maybe it's going to be a lot more long-term than what I th first thought. Maybe Penguin or Falcone dies in the second movie and, and Penguin still fills in the power vacuum then rather than him dying in the first movie. But, like, anyway, I digress. So, next question is from Nate1317. Do you think we will see hints towards the Batman eventually getting a Robin? And do you think he will eventually get one? Because I think it would be cool to get a more serious Robin in the Batman movie. So, I've spoke about this quite a few times before, but um, just to very quickly summarize it now, I definitely think they will, no matter what, touch on Robin in the trilogy. The only thing is, I expect that to be done in years time. I don't think that should happen in the first movie. I'm not saying it isn't. I can't disprove that. But really, like one year, six months in, I know the movie will take place over a certain amount of months and whatnot. But like, I don't think you're going to have, I, I think it'd be weird to be like, oh, hey, shove Dick Grayson in there. Hey, put on this Robin costume whilst I'm trying to stitch together my, like Batman needs to be a little bit more experienced than that. So that's why I think setting up Dick Grayson is who I personally want. Yeah, it has to be Dick Grayson first in my eyes. In the second movie, to be more of a Batman and Robin film in the third movie, or maybe not that, it's still a Batman film, but he's got Robin there as a side character. It's not necessarily called Batman and Robin. Do you know what I'm trying to say? I think if they're going to do that, have it done at the last act of the third, second movie. Obviously, you can sprinkle Dick Grayson in there throughout the second movie. Maybe even somehow slightly segue him right at the end. Where after the Flying Graysons adopts him or takes him in initially. But not anytime soon. And that's what I mean. Think about when this trilogy comes out. It, it, trilogies don't come out over two years. There's usually a year or two or more, uh, give or take, time in between each film. So by the third movie, God, yeah, we'll be ready. And Bruce Pattinson himself, Bruce, will be ready to take on a role. So good old Chimichanga Productions. Good to see you, man. Um, do I think that when Bruce turns up to the funeral, it's one of his first appearances publicly since his return to Gotham, hence why there's so much press on him, and is what Alfred's referring to when he says you're becoming quite a celebrity. So yeah, kind of what we were talking about earlier, but you mentioned the specific factor that we've discussed of... So it doesn't necessarily mean what that other comment said a few videos back with how maybe when Bruce came back from training, he didn't come into Gotham at all. He just went out. Whenever he went out, it was in Batman mode. But other than that, Alfred did all the shopping. Alfred did everything else. You see what I mean? But you're saying, okay, so he turned up to Gotham, but he just maybe doesn't go out a lot. And that is another believable one. Because no matter what, this is kind of a hard one to decipher, even though it's probably obvious to some. But, you know, the more you kind of stare down the barrel, sometimes other things do point out to you as a possibility that are just as good as a possibility with subtle differences. And that's what I feel like this is. So... The press will always, I feel like, make a fuss about Bruce Wayne. He's a playboy billionaire kind of thing. Everyone always wants a, a scoop from Bruce, right? A reporter, I believe, will always be like that. So it could just be that when he gets out of his 
damn ass nice car. When he walks, around, I believe, around, I think, to get up the steps, that's when a bunch of reporters are there. So you could be right. It could be the fact that he hardly ever goes out, or it could just be a typical day in Bruce, you know, going out in public. So that's what I mean. You can attribute that you're quite the celebrity line to little things like that, even though it probably is more about Batman getting a bigger name for himself. But yet again, the city already knows about Batman. That's the only thing that slightly detracts me from that, but maybe just not as much as what is warranted to say the line of you're becoming quite a celebrity. So ultimately, the press, I do want to believe that. I want to believe that Bruce hasn't gone out because I love that idea so much. So that's why the press is so fascinated with him. Hence why Alfred is saying you're becoming quite the celebrity. Of course, yet again, I don't want to get false pretenses here. Like that could be about Batman antics. I'm not saying it isn't, but... I do love the idea of Bruce Wayne just popping up in Gotham again after one year, six months um, of Batman being around. Also, as people have pointed out, that would help. Oh, Batman came to Gotham, but yeah, Bruce has only just turned up a year, six months later. That would only help his cover story, to be honest. So from Lev, Lev, Lev Dini, Lev Dini. I'm just going to leave it at that. Due to this news, I feel like the Penguin will probably be the main villain of the sequel. I also feel like the position of Mayor won't be filled by the end of the movie, meaning that the Penguin could run for Mayor in the second film. So yeah, that's, you know, obviously, I mean, Mayor Cobblepot's been done before, uh, well, that's, you know, the graphic novels, but also, you know, even TV shows have gone there with Gotham, Fox's Gotham. I really wouldn't mind either way, because him running for Mayor is fair enough, but I, I also don't mind if he doesn't run for Mayor, because Mayor's quite a big thing, and, you know, Oswald is always aspiring to climb up sometimes more weaselly than others so like you know riding off the back of Falcone I'm sure in this initial movie but you know let's say Falcone dies or whether when Falcone's alive and he still tries to run for mayor then uh it, it does make the speculation that much more interesting you don't think that the position of mayor will be fit, filled by the end of this movie that's fair enough because you know we know the mayor will probably die towards the beginning that's probably the first case uh, that, you know, leads Jim Gordon to be like, does any of this mean anything to you? But yeah, it definitely does still really poke that question in my eyes because the fact that the mayor's position is now open, well, that is, means another mayor needs to be uh, eventually elected. So yeah, that could mean Mayor Cobblepot, but that could mean the second film. Something to ponder either way. Next up is Levitron Productions. So how do I think Bruce Wayne would interact with people that he knows are evil? And I love this question. Such as Carmine Falcone. So because when he is Batman, he is actively trying to take them down. This is going by the theory in your video when he has come back to Gotham and, there, and, and has been there for a while. Okay, and goes full on Batman for the first year, six months. And you end it off by saying, and like you said, doesn't really know how to be Bruce Wayne. So... I love that because even if none of that is true and Bruce has been around, he still probably and likely doesn't know how to reconcile with the duality of Batman and Bruce, hence the big inspiration from Matt Reeves himself. Like the fact that he even cited Ego is just huge. So, as you say, this makes such an interesting question for me because, or like not even a question, because it's not like I can definitively answer that, but a subject matter because... You saying, how do I think Bruce would interact with people that he knows are evil? I mean, no, he runs up the steps. Well, he doesn't run up the steps. He walks up them. Penguin goes like that. Maybe I'm showing it in the video. Falcone's there. The fact that he is probably in year one. And like, you have been feeding, eating well. Goth, you know, that would be, oh, I can't wait. You, you've raised such a good thing that I didn't even consider. It's like, we're going to see Bruce Wayne. Who's Batman? Be in the presence of Oswald Cobblepot. Who maybe, for all we know, he's already done the Batmobile chase that you're seeing on screen right now with him. And this is after that. And Carmine Falcone, who Batman is fully aware about. Oh, wow. Like As you say, is he going to be able to hold his grimacing face in? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe not. But regardless, seeing him try is going to be so sweet because... This is what makes Batman such a great character. This so he's not only such a rich and interesting character, but there's different, not necessarily different versions of him at different stages of his life, even though that's partially true. But to shine the light on that even more, he's obviously a different type of person right at the beginning compared to the 10 years in guy, or even five, four years in. That's what makes this movie in of itself, and why so many fans are hyped about it, because of what Matt Reeves said at DC Fandom. I'm sure there are some people, and I've heard this before, and I really do respect that opinion that, oh yeah, but we've had Batman start again, like Batman Begins, we've all had, we've had Batman movies where he starts, but like this, you don't get it, like this is the one. 
where they are honing and magnifying glasses in on that. And what is it like to be a vigilante Batman one year, six months in with all of these ideas that we're discussing? I don't think it's been tackled the way it is and has been with Reeves. And that's what makes this so compelling for so many people. So personally, I would love to see that. I really want to see him kind of act weird around his character. And, and we know for a fact we're getting a scene like that. He, uh, you, You've seen it on screen. So my God. My God, it's just, it's, that's another thing to consider. I think he's going to have a bit of a bit of taste in his mouth. I think that'd be the best way to put it. I think even though we have a bit of a struggle between Bruce and his duality in this movie, and that's what is, you know, a big a big theme, if you will, of this movie, um, I don't think he's that stupid to be extremely, extremely off in the presence of them. However, I wouldn't put it past a Wayne or Bruce specifically to just turn his nose up at them. That will be quite insulting. And if you insult them too much, they might, you, for all we know, you know, Falcone could be like, screw you, I'm going to send out a hit on Wayne Manor or something. But that's quite a reaction. But what I'm trying to say is that in that scene where he gets held like that by Cobblepot and he's brought to a halt, maybe to speak to Falcone, I can still imagine Pattinson's Bruce turning his nose up at him, just being like, I don't want anything to do with you kind of thing. That obviously doesn't lead anyone on to be him being Batman, but it's like, I want nothing to do with your filth. But the interesting factor to that is, so let me introduce this with this comment. We still don't have the transparency with the Waynes. It's like, you're a part of this too. How am I part of this? You'll see. This all goes back, and also with what Reeve said, with what Reeve said about DC fandom, from the perspective of Batman, this corruption has been going on for a long time. How does this tie back to my family? That was said. That couldn't be a heavier indicator that one of the Waynes may have been dabbling in a little bit of dodginess. I'm not saying they're corrupt like Falcone, but maybe as I've articulated before, being in Gotham and being so high up and wealthy and one of the elite, you can't help but dip it even a little toe. You might not have two feet in the paddling pool of shadiness, but you might still have to have a little freaking toe in there. Reeves wouldn't have contemplated Bruce being like, how does that go back to my family? And that's obviously a revelation we're going to learn somewhere or another. Bruce is going to think of his parents being up on a pedestal somewhere or another, but maybe he's going to learn they were a bit shadier than we expected. Long story short, we've been through all that. But the reason why I said all of that is because that might make the conversation really interesting between Falcone, Penguin, and someone like Bruce, because they might know, especially someone as old as Falcone, about his parents and how they were maybe doing some... They, they may have been mutuals, not necessarily fully in crime, but like Falcone may have known enough about the Waynes to know that maybe what the Riddler knows and what Batman and Bruce doesn't know, that he is, through legacy and through family, a part of this too. Um, and that's why Falcone knows. And so, yeah, rambling aside, if Falcone knows and has... I mean, he's been around for a while, when the Waynes were alive. So if they are, and which they probably are, some very degree of corrupt, but like could be like 0.2%, he will know about it. And like that conversation. And then imagine like coming across the boy who's now grown up to be a man, and then knowing that you've kind of know about, about their parents. That could provide for some, an interesting scenario. Do you know what I mean? I, I didn't consider that, but that's why I do these videos. Because it's like, ah, oh, maybe Falcone did know something about that. I mean, of course he would have, if the Waynes were, which, as I keep saying, they obviously are were to some extent with what Reed said. Up next from Aiden Mars. Thanks for all your videos. I never get tired of watching them and digging into the Batman. Thank you for the kind words. I, I sincerely mean that. I really do appreciate the support from you guys. I, I love doing this as much as some of you really love watching them as well. So do you think... And this is what I kind of teased earlier. So the Andy Serkis version of Alfred is going to be supportive of Bruce fighting crime as Batman, like Michael Caine's Alfred was. Or do you think it will be more like Sean Pertwee's Alfred, which I have definitely kind of said before, he, he's got to be a lot more rough and gruffy like that younger type, but where he's worried for Bruce and doesn't want him to get hurt. I personally imagine him being similar to Pertwee. However, in the trailer, he did say you're becoming quite a celebrity. And now this takes interesting because you're saying, and he didn't seem too affected by it. Also, do you think Bruce totally made his Batman suit by himself without any pre-made things, as in Nolan's movies where Fox was supplying Bruce? Patterson's cow was obviously stitched, so I'm wondering if he completely crafted his suit from scratch, perhaps with Alfred's help. So to quickly answer the latter of your question, 100%, I think a lot of it from his bikes to the Batmobile upgraded wholly through him and Alfred's help. But the first part, talking about Earth-1, Batman Man Earth 1 graphic novels in that he didn't really approve but he was kind of reluctant and then he was just like well if you're going to do this anyway Bruce like I'm going to help you but also what I'm trying to say here is with Andy Serkis' Alfred I think 
it could be a similar situation. Just judging, like, I, I really do gauge it, just even through the casting choice. Andy Serkis, he's not an old, old, old guy. He's in his 50s. So, truly, it will be the more Sean Pertwee Alfred type. Now, I personally think Sean Pertwee's Alfred was a lot more on board with that stuff. Whereas Andy Serkis' Alfred, as I said, I think it'll be more like Earth 1, but not as harsh as Earth 1. Because Alfred in Earth 1 is, like, he's quite pretty rude, if I'm being honest. Like, they really did quite a bit, a bit of a different Alfred in that, albeit ultimately it ends in the same kind of direction. But yeah, Andy Serkis is, I think, he'll probably be like an, like a year, six months ago, because this has already been happening for a year, six months. That's the context we need to remember. So Alfred, whether we know it or not, he's already been going along the ride with Bruce for this for one year, six months. So I don't even know if we're going to see that debate or not, like between Alfred and Bruce. So like I think already it might be at a point where... Alfred's just, if there's any reluctance shown, Alfred's already going along with it. As I said, one year, six months in. However, we might get some moments of disagreements. That might be the thing that is still present from his initial disapproval. So uh, when Bruce is doing certain things, they could end. It's probably going to be more of a brother in arms relationship. Parental father figure, of course, but more of like an older brother. The kind of older brother who, when you're five, they're 19, if you know what I mean. So they're much older than you. Even though they're still your brother, they can kind of play both roles of older brother, uncle but also parental. Depends on the situation. So uh, that's the that's the vibe I get, truly. So mix of Sean Pertwee, mix of Earth 1. Alfred, if you've read the graphic novels there, you would know exactly what I mean. Um, but not as harsh as that. To kind of back it up even more, as I said, I think he helped Bruce with the suit, the Batmobile, all kinds of things. But this takes me directly onto the comment from Fat Batman. Loving the videos, Boba, keep it up. My question for the next video, going back to what you've said about Bruce slash Batman ego and him debating his no-kill rule, how important slash involved do you think Alfred will be in helping Bruce make that choice? Do you think Alfred will be all for no-killing or... Would you think that because Alfred being XSAS would agree that sometimes killing people is the best option? Or do you think that he will leave it to Bruce to make his own decision? So hence why I was just directly following us up with that previous question in the Earth 1 graphic novel. In the first volume, he's very like, you're going to need a gun. And then... Like, Alfred's all for him, like, full-on, like, killing... Well, he's kind of just, like, as you as you said, like, XSES, he's like, well, I'm not a murderer, and I don't believe in just killing people, but, like, if you're going to do something, you're going to want to kind of bring a gun or a shotgun or something and just, like, do it that way. But Bruce is like, no, I'm not going to do it. Like, so Alfred in that version was all about, oh, yeah, well, why wouldn't you do it? Like, that's what you're going to do. Like, you're going to take that, but, like, no. So that's what I'm trying to say is in this version, this is why this is such an intriguing comment with what you ask here, how important involved do I think Alfred will be in helping Bruce make that choice? That's a hard one because, as I said, in Earth 1, he's the one who proposes killing or defending himself with a gun or, like, you know, if you defend, if you happen to kill them, it's, it's kind of fine kind of thing. They could play that with this, but yet again, as I said, the movie's already taking place a year and six months in, so unless they show flashbacks to his early year one days when Alfred is first finding out about his Batman antics. I don't know why if we're even going to see that contemplation take place. So I have to believe that Batman's already almost or practically got his no kill rule, albeit it will be uh, walked, the, the line will be walked this this in the events of this movie, especially with, I mean, Riddler's a very intellectual villain who will get in Batman's head through testing him. As Reeve said, he's not having the effect he wants in the city, let alone now we've got a mastermind coming around. Imagine how hard that's going to push Bruce to the edge. So let me put it this way. I wouldn't be surprised if they take some cues from Earth 1, Batman Earth 1 graphic novels for Alfred and how he's probably okay with doing it, since, as you said, he is ex SAS. So I, I think if there's a situation like, I don't want to give anything away too much from Batman graphic, Earth 1 graphic novel, but let's just say Alfred comes in and saves Bruce with a gun. And the other person gets yeeted. <laughs> so, I'm not saying he's going to do that in this, but I'm saying maybe Andy Serkis' Alfred would be willing to do that, where Bruce wouldn't. Or maybe just through this movie, Bruce has been resisting killing people, but he gets close in this movie, movie but there's like a, kind of a conversation between Alfred and Bruce in the Batcave where they, they contemplate something like that, or maybe Alfred is kind of encouraging and saying it's not shameful if, like, you know, you do it in self-defense or something, like, why wouldn't you? Like, you can't rely on these gadgets that have broken before and things like that it's just silly you need to defend yourself but bruce is like no like you know and that he he has that conviction and it actually in turn maybe influences alfred to have a little bit of a different outlook regardless though i think alfred will have quite a kind of grungy kind of um he will still be prim and proper but as 
this is why I, I, I don't want it to get the wires crossed here. I think he will be really like Batman Earth 1 graphic novel type, but not as kind of harsh and um, coarse as that guy. I think he will be kind of a balance between, as you as we, we kind of discussed, Sean Pertwee is such a good Alfred. He is prim and proper like, you know, you would expect of an Alfred Butler, but he is ready to completely get, you know, fisticuffs. So, it just depends. I 100% I, it will be like that. It will be like that in the movie. It just depends if Reeves goes a step higher, more towards the Earth-1, harsher, coarser version, or like keeping it in the middle like Sean Pertwee, but maybe even closer to kinder. That's the mystery. But ladies and gentlemen, after around 10 questions and I guess 40 minutes into this video, I think I'm going to end it there. But do not worry, there is plenty more to come. If you want to ask even more and speculate even more, four comments that I will be choosing for the next video, feel free to go ham down in the comments. Uh, I, you know, I, I will be gathering them and I'm going to try and get one out in the next week, but I'm going to be very busy next week with reviews for Titans and Stargirl uh, and, and Superman and Lois. So I'm going to try my best, but we'll see. If not, one will be coming the week after. And other than that, like this video if you did enjoy it. Make sure you subscribe to never miss out on a crucial update or just bonus videos like this on the Batman 2022. As always, guys, hashtag time. If you got this far in the video, I always love it just seeing the, the individuals who make it this far and, you know, type a comment but prove that they got this far from putting a hashtag alfred is becoming quite the celebrity and other than that ladies and gentlemen links as always are in the top pin comment that's my comment make sure you click on the show more expand it so it drops down so you can see the links to my twitter you can see links to patreon discord all of that good stuff but thank you so much for watching i hope you all have a lovely rest of your day and i'll see you fellow bat family in the next video goodbye